Hi, we're hoping to provide you with a basic overview of safety and handling for Proxima ACR resins. We are going to be performing a vacuum infusion process to mold two composite panels. The first will be made following our best practices, and the second will be done using a simpler process. Before we get started, I want to review some basic safety. In general, we try to ensure good standards of industrial hygiene and utilize basic PPE. Proxima ACR resins have a strong odor that can be detected at concentrations as low as 5 parts per billion. The time-weighted average permissible exposure limit in the United States is 0.5 parts per million, which is 100 times greater than the odor threshold which means the smell of resin does not indicate an unsafe level in the air. That being said, proper engineering controls and PPE should be used to ensure a safe and comfortable working environment. Proxima ACR resins are categorized as GHS, flammable liquids. Their flashpoints are above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which allows them to be treated as combustible liquids in certain industries and applications. As a comparison, acetone's flashpoint is less than zero degrees Fahrenheit. Please review the SDS for all components for more information. We are going to be using ACR4100 and CT714 to infuse a composite panel. The layup includes six plies of 1200 GSM unidirectional fiberglass, approximately 12 inches by 20 inches. We are going to be using a pressure rated mixing vessel, which helps limit odors and allows us to easily degas the resin. While we're transferring resin into our mixing vessel, we're using a fume extractor with activated charcoal filters to control the odor. Once your resin is weighed out, begin to degas. Run the agitator in the mixing vessel. Ensure that the vessel is below negative 27 inches of mercury. Be sure to use a vapor trap with activated charcoal filters in line to keep any VOCs out of the pump's oil. The catalyst is a suspension that will settle out over time. We recommend mixing the catalyst or shaking it before weighing it out. The mix ratio is 50 to 1 by weight. We're going to be adding the catalyst to the resin in the mixing vessel under vacuum. This will allow us to add the catalyst in without introducing air while also mixing. Working time can be controlled through catalyst selection and temperature. We recommend putting a vacuum regulator in line to your infusion. We reduce our vacuum level to negative 25 inches of mercury. Be sure to have an organic vapor trap in line to your knockout pot. The resin has a viscosity at room temperature around 10 centipoise, so special care has to be taken to eliminate any open channels in the vacuum bag. The vacuum bag should be checked for any leaks. You only have a few seconds during your infusion time. Heat is required to cure Proxima. We molded our parts on a heated table. Our recommended profile is a 40 degrees C dwell or 110 degrees F for an hour, followed by a ramp to 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit, where that is also held for an hour. Proxima resins are exothermic and can get hot, but there is no risk of a runaway exotherm resulting in a fire or other damage. For limitations on cure, the product can be demolded at a green strength and post cured separately. When you're ready to clean up, we recommend using a non-polar solvent, something similar to toluene or xylene. We do not recommend using acetone or other polar solvents. When you're done for the day, we recommend putting a head of nitrogen on the resin and catalyst and storing the catalyst in a cool environment. In the absence of a pressurized mixing vessel, you can mix the catalyst in by hand. Ensure that you are still using a fume extractor with activated charcoal. Without degassing your resin, bubbles will form in your infusion. It will not affect the properties of the final part, but there will be a higher void content. After your 120C or 250F cure, 
your part is safe to demold with full properties. We use a Chemlease RMB Easy to release our molds to prevent any adhesion to your mold surface.